Okay, so you've done a 5K, a 10K, maybe you've already done a half marathon. Well, now it's time to do a fast half marathon. Well, that's what GCN's Dan Lloyd is after. Isn't that right, Dan? Right, well Mark and Heather have roped me in to do my first half marathon at quite short notice, I have to say. Uh, it is my first one, but at the same time, I want to do it as fast as I possibly can. Whoa, is your plan to go as fast as possible straight from the start? Yeah, that's how you do it. You start off fast, then you go a bit faster in the middle, and then you sprint at the end. That's my plan for the day. Ooh, I think we need to give you a little bit of a hand here. So here's some tips on how to run a fast half marathon. <laughs> tackle race day it's actually a lot of prep and training that goes on in the months prior and one of those is setting a realistic target time or goal have you got one in mind yeah yeah i've got one in the back of my head that i want to achieve what's yours what's your target time heather i'm, I'm hoping for around 130. yeah so the one i've got in my head is 129.48 oh. yeah, it's about 12 <laughs> seconds quicker than heather now i'm joking of course but 90 minutes is what i've got in mind because that feels like you know nice round number and a good goal to have. Yeah, so now that you've got that time in mind, you can work out the pacing needed to make that time and obviously tailor your training around that. So you'd be looking at 416 per kilometre or a 652 per mile. Right, that's a bit faster than I thought it was actually. <laughs> There's no backing out now. <laughs> but now let's look at how you implement that into your training. <laughs> The type of training we do is really important and so many runners fall into that trap of running everything kind of hard with no focus on a specific session. For a half marathon training you really need to focus on doing long runs and threshold. Threshold runs will help your body be able to adapt to the lactic acid and long runs will help you improve your aerobic capacity. So what about speed work because Mark had me doing some speed work for my fast 5k. Well don't worry Dan it's not entirely wasted but if you've only got time for a few runs a week then you're better off focusing on tempo and longer runs but if you do have time to fit in a few extra then it'll just help you improve that top end speed and also make your running more economic. So where then does my pacing so that four minute 16 per kilometre fit into all of this? Well that's a threshold run and conveniently it's roughly at around your half marathon pace. So a good starting point, you basically want to be running continuously at threshold for around 10 to 20 minutes and you can obviously build it up but a good starting point could be doing a session of two lots of 15 minutes with a few minutes recovery in between and that leads us nicely onto your pacing for the race. So running at this pace during your threshold runs will really help you dial in for race day. But if you're like me, it's quite easy to get carried away on the day, especially at the start. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that because I am a bit of a slave to numbers either on the bike or when I'm running. And also I know that it should feel easy at the start. And I also know that I could really pay for it if I do go too fast at the start. Okay, well, personally, what I like to do is know my pace per kilometre and then also know what time I need to go to 5k, 10k and so on and I'll just double check that. But then also for a lot of racers they do have pacers so these are people that are run at a set time and you can just look out for them they normally have a flag. Um, All right. Yeah just make sure you're on track but I have heard a lot of stories that they don't quite run at the right pace. Okay. They do also check your own pace. Yeah. Well, what I am slightly worried about is the last sort of five k's because that for me will be going into unknown territory. So I need to do 416 average. Do I start dead on that and hope I can hold it or even raise it? Or do I start at like 410 for five k's and give myself a 30 second buffer? Well, it's actually a really good point. So you know, you have adrenaline on race day and I actually say utilize that. So like say run at 410 per kilometer to start off with but cap it and make sure you don't run it for any longer than a K or two. And then after that, just make sure you settle into your race pace. And if you have anything in the last few K, you can up it, hopefully get that time you're after. Okay, let's start talking a little bit about fueling strategy for a half marathon. Uh, 
that's been with breakfast. I presume that's not dissimilar to when I was racing a bike and that you'd have it two to three hours before you start competing. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty spot on with that. And obviously it just needs to be something that your stomach can handle. So practice that beforehand. But the fueling comes a few days earlier, really, when you've got to start to up the carbs. But I mean, nothing too crazy. You're not going to start eating bowls and bowls of pasta and you just be bloated. But it's making sure you have a decent meal the night before and you know, you're well hydrated before the race. Yeah. And then in terms of during the half marathon, I mean, all my runs so far have been about an hour or less, so I've never even taken water out, let alone anything to eat or a gel or anything. Since it's going to be longer, 90 minutes, is yeah. that something I should consider on the day? Definitely. I mean, your, your energy will get depleted over that length of time. And so again, you need to practice this in training, but take with you a gel or some other carb source and um, have your own with you so you know that you're used to that. And then take it at around halfway. I personally take it at about 10 miles because I like that like incentive. I'm going to get 10 miles and I have my gel and then it's only three miles to the finish. So just whatever works for you. Yeah, and then the fluids. So I'm not going to be carrying a bottle with me the whole no. way around, but there are fueling stations yeah. around. Do you, how much yeah, do you... they'll, they'll, they'll be um, energy drinks and water. So normally like a Lucasade or something or water. If you've got a gel, you probably only need the water. But don't like take a bottle and think, oh, I've got this bottle, I've got to finish it. Take a few sips and run with it for a bit if you feel comfortable and then throw it away, make sure it's in the in the bin area or just you know, take a sip and then wait till the next station. Yeah, I think this is definitely something I'm going to practice because eating on the bike when it's a bit easier in the race yeah. is quite easy, but I'm struggling to think how I'm going to do drinking and eating yeah. or at least the a gel. The drinking can get a bit messy and you're trying to stop yeah, running. Yeah, because like... you're going hard <laughs> and you're kind of jogging up and down. But yeah, I'm going to practice that before the day. Good idea. Before we finish this video about half marathons, I've got one last question that's on my mind, and that is about warm-ups, which I know are really important, just my day's time trialing, etc. My worry is that I've only got a certain amount of energy and I don't want to use too much of that in the warm-up. Well, yeah, this is actually really commonly neglected, which is crazy, really, because considering how much hard work and training you put into the half marathon, and then just to kind of ruin it all or potentially ruin it all at the final hurdle and actually a lot of races kind of make this quite hard for you because it's not like you can just run anywhere you actually get penned in quite often yeah. from a certain time before the race like mountain like my early days as a mountain biker so you'd warm up and then you'd freeze in the last 15 minutes before the start exactly so i normally suggest trying to go for a sort of 10 to 20 minutes jog just before you do get penned in. It doesn't have to be hard, just nice and easy, and then just finish with a few strides, so just accelerations where you're kind of opening out the legs and getting ready for the race. But then, when you do go to get penned in, it does depend on the conditions you're going to be racing in, or the start line, the temperatures and everything. But you can wear an extra bit of clothing and perhaps give that to a spectator or a friend, or maybe even just wear like a bin bag with some arms, armholes cut in, yeah. and then just chuck that in the bin. I'm not giving my kit to a spectator, it's Assos. <laughs> Thank you to both Mark and to you, Heather, for those tips. I kind of feel ready for it now. And actually, I was just thinking this is the first time since I retired from cycling that I've given myself a sporting target and I already feel motivated for it. Well, that's great. It's great you feel ready because it is just over a week away for yeah. us, to be honest. Yeah, it's all about the taper now, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Well, we look forward to bringing you the results from the half marathon. I, I don't think that they're going to be that bothered about where we place. I think they're going to be bothered about who beats who. I mean, Mark's going to be about a kilometre per yeah. Uh, one minute per kilometre quicker than us. about him. But we could be, I think it could be neck and neck, couldn't it? Sprint oh, for the line. Could get competitive here. Yeah. Well, it's getting to that time of year where there are quite a lot of half marathons. So if you're entering any, do let us know how you get on and any other tips that you might have that you've learned along the way. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to DTN by clicking on the globe. And if you want to watch a video with Dan and Mark running a fast 5K, click over here.